YouTube, Big Swole 58 here. Welcome back. Now, if you didn't follow my channel at all, you know by now that I love Smith & Wesson revolvers. And my, probably my favorite one, or my favorite in all of those revolvers is the 686. But I am missing one. I'm missing the 686-5. This I, one is going to complete my 686 collection because it is a 686-5. And though it is not new, it is a used gun, it is practically new. Uh, and this is the first time I've actually opened it since I brought it home. So I guess in a way we're going to kind of take a look at this one together. But first of all, so let's get all the stuff out of the way. And, but we'll get that out of the way. And we're going to take a look at the firearms. Let's see if you can zoom in on it just a little bit and get a better picture of it. I'm going to apologize for any glare that you may be having, but I do not have a professional studio, so it is what it is. But this is 686-5. It's a seven-shot revolver with a two-and-a-half-inch barrel. I was hoping to find a, one with a three-inch barrel, but um, that just wasn't working out to my favor. But this is the last 686 that I'm going to be buying because, as far as I'm concerned, this completes my collection. Now I have one from the dash, from the no dash, all the way up to and including the dash six. Now I gave this a quick once over when I picked it up from AFFL, and as far as I can tell, uh, this gun is pretty much markless. It doesn't have any sort of um, user induced flaws on it, any sort of damage anywhere on it that I can pick out. It's a really nice gun uh, and like I said for the price I paid for it I'm very pleased. Now I kinda decided I would never go into any more specifics about gun prices that I pay because I think that you know that that maybe is not a good thing. I think sometimes it may come across as as bragging or arrogant and I'm not doing that at all. I, I, I don't want to do it because I don't want somebody to feel like they're getting ripped off um, and I'm getting some you know marvelous deals. Uh, I think as long as you're happy with the deal you're getting, you're getting a good deal. Uh, and I think that's just true, period. Uh, prices vary from place to place and time to time and deal to deal. So I'm not going to talk anymore specifically about price. I can say that I've got this model, this gun, for several hundred dollars under what the current gun market prices are bringing. And it was just about right time, right place. That's all. Nothing more than that. Most of the time it just boils down to patience and luck. But back to the gun. Everything on it's tight. I mean, it's practically looks and feels brand new. Uh, I know the turn ring isn't always the best indicator about how much a gun's been fired because you can... You know, you can polish those out, uh, but you can look in other places and kind of help to determine whether or not it's been used much at all. And uh, and I don't think this one has been. I think it's a great gun. I got it at a great price. I'm happy with it. Uh, you know, I'm going to replace these uh, factory grips uh, with some. Probably try to find some. Smith & Wesson uh, stocks, but if I can't, I'll be visiting uh, gungrips.com because I, I love their stocks. I've got one pair already on my Model 686-6. Uh, I'm just putting a plug in for them because I think, I think their Smith & Wesson products are fantastic. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they look f and feel uh, just like the Smith & Wesson originals and in some ways and some places about them they're even more they're even better made and unlike most places where you buy from you actually get to pick the pair of grips that you're buying but anyway that's my 686-5 two and a half inch 357 7 shot magnum 
this is the last 686 that I'll be buying because this is going to complete my 686 collection. I'll get this puppet cleaned up, polished up, waxed up, and a nice set of grips on it. And we that's all I got. I appreciate you watching again. Till the next time, it's Big Swole 58.